Um, can you put into words kind of what facing Demetrius is like? You hear a lot about him and how great he is. When you were in the cage with him, what is it like in actuality? Um, you know, he's good. He's he's where he's at for a reason. And, uh, you know, sharing the, cage, sharing the octagon with him was uh, something uh, I can definitely put in my back pocket to learn from. Uh, you know, obviously I wasn't on the receiving end of, the win, uh, things didn't go the way I had planned them to. Uh, I got away from my game plan a little bit, but you know he's uh, he's 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 very knowledgeable, and that's something uh, something that he has that a lot of fighters don't. How shocked were you by the throw and then the arm bar? And can you talk us through from your standpoint what you recall of that of that move? Um, you know, in the moment I thought I was I was on the ground before I thought he was just gonna throw me. I was gonna get ready to move and scramble. Um, I thought I was on the ground before he, before he hit that arm bar. He hit the arm bar, I guess, midair. Uh, it was sneaky. Uh, like I, I, like I said earlier, I laughed at him a couple times during the fight just because he pulled off some sneaky shit, and I just thought it was, uh, thought it was pretty cool myself. But you know, it wasn't cool to be on the receiving end of it. But it is what it is. Did you feel like you fought well? You said you had, you know, a couple mistakes, but it seemed to me like, you know. You, you raised your game a little bit from what you've been before and that maybe most of the guys in the top 10 or top five you would be tonight except for him. You know, uh, it was definitely not the performance um, that I wanted at all. And uh, I don't mean that just because I didn't win. I mean because I didn't implement the things that my coaches wanted me to. Uh, I should have gone a different route. And I think if I would have went that route, it would have been a little bit better for me and it would have you know, played it in my favor. But... You know, I'm 24 years old. What can I say? Fight for a world title against the, what you guys call the pound for pound greatest. So all I'm going to do is just learn. Right here, Ray. Great fight, buddy. Sorry about the outcome. It's a great Thank fight. You. Thank you. Um, after the open workouts, you told us that you and your coaches had assessed some opportunities that you could exploit in Mighty Mouse's game. Now that the fight is over and done with and you've been in there with him, can you reveal some of those things that y'all saw um you know he's uh he is good and i i definitely feel like demetrius is at the top and where he's at because of his knowledge and his ability to correct things in the fight mentally and uh but we, we you know we've seen some things uh on the feet where he uh he doesn't bail very good you know he uh he's real chin high he you know he's been dropped more and more recently and uh, that's something we were going to try to capitalize on but you know i uh i shifted the fight a different direction and didn't stick to the game plan okay and uh, last question again at the open workouts you displayed um a lot of submissions from from the back you were working on and also you displayed some really great kicks and you didn't really get a chance to implement any of that stuff is that what you mean when you say that you didn't uh, work the game plan yeah you know uh my game plan was um you know, to, to more or less go with the flow, but I definitely felt like I could have outboxed him, outstruck him, and uh, in that department, I should have, uh, you know, just believed in my hands and uh, just let him fly, but, you know, unfortunately, age, age was not on my side tonight, and I just need to learn more. Ray, uh, you talk you talk about learning more, and, and watching the fight, it just seems sometimes like DJ is two, three steps ahead and that's not to say anything bad of your skills, but DJ is obviously on this level where he's stringing things together. Can you just talk about dealing with his transitions and how difficult that was? I felt like fighting DJ was fighting my future self, in a sense. I mean, if you guys look at all my fights, I'm always two steps ahead of people. I'm always three steps ahead of people. I'm always being sneaky with, you know, submissions. And I, I truly felt like I just fought uh, a future version of myself. You know, he... Uh, He's had time in this game. He's he's had uh, the ability to to learn how to control himself in there, and uh, you know he it, it was a little bit of shock to me to be to be out scrambled and you know out out positioned. And the last question I want to ask is, you know, as you walked away from the cage, you know, we saw you uh, get tears in your eyes, and obviously in that moment it was tough dealing with the defeat. But in the time since then, have you sort of just grappled with where you're going to go from here and how you're going to build off of this? You know, a good buddy told me, uh, you know, like with, with crying after a loss and crying, you know, they always say, don't cry, keep your head up and things like that. And, uh, you know, everybody uh, made memes and, 
you know, talk shit about Daniel Cormier when he was crying on uh on public television. But what you guys don't realize is what we go through to, to get to this point, what we sacrifice to get to this point, and when you want it so bad and you don't get it, it's it's heartbreaking, you know? Uh it my my buddy my buddy told me that if you don't cry after a loss then you didn't want it as much as what you thought. So, you know, I just wanted it. I really did and uh it just wasn't my night. It's not my time. Um since then, you know, the only thing I can tell myself is uh that I'm 24, you know? I mean, look at DJ when he had his first crack at the title, Dominic beat him in like devastating fashion. Well, not devastating, but dominated him. He lost his first crack at a title. You know, I'm 24 and I'm just going to keep working and I'm going to get back there. Ray, have you ever seen that kind of submission? Has anyone ever tried that on you before? No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't even think it was really a submission. I think it's just, you know, sometimes you can just make shit up. He just happened to suplex or you know throw me, and then my arm was straight, trying to brace myself, and he just saw an armbar. Did you think for a second that you'd be able to get out? I really did. I thought I was about to scramble out of it. Uh, you know, he uh, he had good control of it. He 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 was moving it real well. Uh, I felt like I was seconds of from getting out of it and scrambling, and then uh, I turned uh, turned one way when I should have turned the other and uh, got stuck. Now that you've actually fought him, was he better than you thought he would be? Yeah, well, I mean, we we always knew he was good, you know. But uh, it's it's one thing to to be in there with him and just watching him. I uh, you know I've. I've fucking watching Demetrius Johnson since I was like 13 years old. I mean, I know what he's capable of, and I know how good he is, but, you know, sometimes in the sport, just trying to skip steps, and uh, we try to skip some steps tonight, and now we just got to, you know, work our way back and keep moving forward. Are you going to stay at 125? Yeah, why not? I mean, for anybody, all the UFC staff, I was there at 645 ready to weigh in at 124 just to show you guys that weight's not an issue. So, yeah, I'm staying at 125. Thank you.